What up, my brothers and sisters? This week we bow to vanquish the villainous voice of the oppressor by venerating V for Vendetta by Alan Moore. It's November 5th, 1997, and it sure do suck the living England. In the late 1980s, an all-out nuclear war busted out. People started getting scared like they do and voted in a fascist government full of racist-ass honkies called Norse Fire. Ever since then, the government got everybody by the ball. Peep 16-year-old Evie Hammond, for instance. Girl so cashed out that she got to turn tricks on the street just to get by. One night, some secret police cats called The Finger start getting rough with Evie and even bout the ghost of girl when BAM! A badass mother rocking a Guy Fawkes mask jumps them bitches and saves Evie. This true blue anarchist go by the name of V and he keep it 100 every day plotting to burn Norse fire to the ground. How real do we keep it? Well, after saving Evie, he blow up the parliament building like he don't give a f Then he take her back to his back cave called the Shadow Gallery. Meanwhile, there be this old school detective named Finch who trying to bring the heat down on V. Dude got all the government big wigs in his posse, including the top dog himself, Adam Susan, who spent most of his time chilling with fate, a computer that pretty much controls everything. Apparently, V been hustling lately. Merkin haters left and right, a pedo preacher man named Lilliman, some radio jockey asshole named Prothero, and a doc named Surridge. Finch eventually realized that all these homies connected. They all used to work at a government resettlement camp called Lark Hill, where peeps got experimented on and tortured. V was one of the victims. He supposedly had a psychotic breakdown, busted this shit up, and bounced on out of there. Now it looks like this brother is on a gnarly revenge grind. Months later, V busts into the propaganda building headed up by a shyster named Das Combe and broadcasts a message to everyone preaching that things gotta change. And they ain't gonna unless people step up and buck the system. V pulls some sick moves escaping from the building and Das Combe gets capped in the process. Meanwhile, things might be looking up for Evie. For a little while, at least. Evie left the shadow gallery and is shacking up with this old dude named Gordon. But when her boy toy gets shanked, Evie gets fed up with this shitty world and try to strap up and serve up some street justice. But before she do, girl gets got and thrown in the can. While she wasting away in her solo cell, Evie finds some letters written by Valerie Page, an actress who got locked up, tortured, and eventually killed for being gay. Val went out like a real G, though. She kept showing the world love and refused to give in. Evie reads that letter over and over. Evie's captors roll in and tell her to cooperate or die. But Evie want to keep it clutch like Valerie did and tells them where to stick it. Thinking she about to get glocked, she surprised as f when somebody roll up and be like, you free girl, huh? Turns out this whole prison torture scenario was a big play put on by V, who was trying to set Evie free from fear, which is the real prison that's been keeping her down her whole life. Anyway, while she was gone, V did some next level hacking, full busted into the fake computer system and been using it to play mind games with Adam Susan, making him slowly lose his damn mind. After a while, Fitch's boy Dominic figures out the reason V able to ball so hard is cause he hooked up to the fake computer. On the next 5th of November, V goes ham and blows the hell out of a bunch of more government buildings and shit getting closer to a full on revolution in the streets. It's getting real and Finch gotta find V and put his ass in check fast. So how's he gonna find him? By dropping acid at Lark Hill and tripping balls till he can see inside V's head. Duh! Well, it turns out it works. Finch's eyes open wide and he realized that the only person or thing that can keep you down is yourself. Then he finds V's secret swag pad and fills him full of lead. But V survives for two reasons. Number one, cause ideas are bulletproof. And number two, cause V's secret identity is 50 cent. Nah, I'm just playing. But he's still f***ed up and eventually dies in Evie's arms. His last words are, you must discover whose face lies behind this mask, but you must never know my face. V ain't the only hustler lying in dirt though. Adam Susan gets one in the dome and the whole damn city start tearing itself apart. After some deep ass soul searching, Evie figures out V's last riddle and slaps that mask on her own face. Then she tell them angry mobs, look y'all, we ain't done. The world is yours now, and we best rebuild. Don't 
get up. On her way back to the Batcave, she picks up Dominic, who about to get his ass whooped. After that, Evie blows up the government's main crib on Downing Street and V's body with it. The graphic novel ends with Finch rolling solo out of the city and the implication that Evie gonna train Dom to be the next V. Can't kill an idea, am I right? Even though this graphic novel called V for Vendetta, that V stand for way more than that. Except for definite and indefinite articles, every chapter title start with the letter V. V's got the name game on lock too. V, E-V, Valerie, Victoria Station, plus the letter V looks like the Roman numeral five. Repping not only that V was in room five up at Lark Hill, but also gives a little nod to the 5th of November. This OG is straight gangster for more than just his alliterative and repetitive flow. V got mad style when he up on that vengeance grind. When he roll up on the people that did him dirty back at Lark Hill, he don't just slap them up, he gives them a taste of their own medicine. Dude dehumanizes Prothero, driving his ass mad, kills Lilliman all church style like his Eucharist time, and uses a syringe to kill Surridge, who was slinging one of them things to experiment on peeps. V's vendetta ain't just about sticking it to the people who f this sh up at Lark Hill, but also burning down the ideology that created such a twisted ass place and such a messed up society. In the face of a system that got so much power that everybody's balls pretty much in a vice, V start preaching the opposite of authority, anarchy. Like V say, authority allows two roles, the torturer and the tortured. Twists people into joyless mannequins that fear and hate while culture plunges into the abyss. But to V, Anarchy don't mean no order, it just means no leaders. Instead, everybody runs the show. It's about you calling your own shots, showing the world love, and refusing to give up what nobody can take from you, your integrity. Like Evie learned from Valerie's letter up in that cell, even though your integrity is just a small thing, it's the difference between being free and being broken. It was my integrity that was important. Is that so selfish? It sells for so little, but it's all we have left in this place. It's the very last inch of us, but within that inch, we are free. Now one of the tightest things about this book is that the relationship between Evie and V ain't your regular damsel in distress bullshit. It's hella complex which we peeping in the first pages of the text. We got panels just to pose showing them doing the same things, like Evie putting on a dress while V putting on his OJ gloves, and both of them looking at their similar reflections in the mirror. Cause not only are they bound by an idea, but it's foreshadowed on how she gonna eventually take up the mask. V even say, Anarchy wears two faces, both creator and destroyer. Thus destroyers topple empires, make a canvas of clean rubble where creators then can build a better world. But that ain't to say V was all good for Evie. If you get all biblical up in this his house, you can peep that Evie's name is similar to Eve. And let's not forget that the dictator's name is Adam Susan. And how did Adam and Eve get their shit wrecked and their world turned upside down? By being tempted by the devil. More than once, V is actually compared to, or compares himself to the devil. I am the devil, and I come to do the devil's work. So with all this killing and blowing shit up, how is V any different from the people he hating on? A lot of people put V in the same crew with other do-gooder superheroes, like Green Lantern. No, no, not that one. My man, yeah. But truth is, calling V good or bad is just too simple. Matter of fact, V often associated with Adam Susan. We got panels just opposing images of Susan talking to the fake computer with V addressing fine ass Madam Justice. Man, even their deaths play out similarly. Both get popped and pretty much at the same time. If you ain't convinced yet, check how similar this sh is. Susan actually give us the lowdown on why he do what he do and says, the only freedom left to my people is the freedom to starve the freedom to die, the freedom to live in a world of chaos. Should I allow them that freedom? I think not. I think not. And when Evie try to figure out why V tortured her and put her in a fake prison, he say, because I love you, because I want to set you free. Both of these players do some hardcore shit to protect others. Saying that V was a good dude or a bad dude is just too simplistic. Yeah, V was an idea, but he was also a human being which means we can't just slap a label on them. Like V himself say, we all got something special going on inside us. Everybody is special, everybody. 
Everybody is a hero, a lover, a fool, a villain. Everybody. Everybody has their story to tell. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, thanks so much for your support. Another great way you can directly support the show is by checking out our sponsors. Today's episode was brought to you by Audible.com, and they're giving away a free audiobook just for being a fan of Thug Notes. They've got more than 180,000 titles to choose from, so you know there's something that you'll like. If you like a recommendation, go check out Doom by Frank Herbert. It's one of the greatest science fiction novels ever, and it's narrated by an amazing cast of actors. So dope. So go to audible.com slash thugnotes to get your free audiobook of Doom or any other book you want. And be sure to subscribe to Wisecrack for updates and more smart stuff all the time. In celebration of the new school year and the publication of the Thug Notes book, we're launching a free contest and giving away a bunch of Thug Notes merch. If you want to learn more, go to wisecrack.co slash back to school. And best of luck, all my well-read ballers.